this is the mint area where they obviously made coins and other valuable goods and this is the palace of Varivara, Varaha and it's also the basement of the king's palace if you note those walls over there the way they go upwards taper at the top Most of the inscriptions are intact. There's generally a procession going on there. Bottom here you've got their prisoners. See the elephants got this uh, guy here and uh, they drag them along and trample on them. This elephant's got its head down. Standing on the, it was a common form of punishment was to uh, place a man's head on a block and get an elephant to stand on his head. Wouldn't have been a very pleasant sight actually. These processional horses here. There's uh, soldiers there fighting or wrestling and then you've got the dancing girls at the top of the second row down processional dancers and then you've got more uh, naked women at the top as well doing some kind of ceremony so you, you kind of get a picture that first of all they celebrated their victories by killing their prisoners. Then they had a procession. Then they had jolly good knees up. <laughs> it's very interesting. Oh, I may have interpreted that wrong, it might have been the other way around. Maybe they all got uh, hammered first before they did everything else, who knows. <laughs> well, I'm sure somebody does, but I'm not too sure. It's that interesting one at the top there. It's like a circular figure at the top of the stone. This thing was built for afterwards, but fascinating stuff. It would have been amazing to be here when all that was going on. Although I wouldn't want to see people being by elephants or anything like that. <laughs> Not exactly my idea of entertainment, but still. <sighs> this area is absolutely huge and it is just a small portion of the royal enclosure. wind over my microphone but the camera is so hot. It's a nice breeze today but it is very perceptive because the temperature is still around 40.
very much like the Inca actually in Peru where you've got the uh, normal, or should I say cheaper stonework used in the normal buildings and then you've got these slightly better, slightly smoother rocks, blocks should I say, for the defensive walls around the royal enclosure. I mean, they're not smooth like those Inca ones, and obviously there are. There's a lot of doubt as to whether they are Inca and not from some previous culture. It's an argument I'm open to. These are not so smooth, as you can see. But they're certainly well fitted together. Just the way they're cut and locked in. A lot of cultures did this. It makes the walls a lot stronger. It makes them very difficult to break down, pull down. Some people say that uh, because the Inca, or so say the Inca did this, and it's in other cultures as well around the world, that <clears throat> they must be more ancient and have a common origin. <clears throat> well, some of them might, but uh, these walls date to the These walls date to the 15th century, maybe as early as the 14th century, but uh, you see the same technique employed here. And also people say, oh, it's uh, to make it earthquake proof, as in the Andes and other places. However, this is not an earthquake area, so that theory is... not valid, certainly here. It's just that they make the wall stronger. That's the conclusion that uh, is pretty obvious. If you're gonna pull blocks down to, to damage it or use them elsewhere, it's very difficult to get them out if they're locked together like this. So that is the main intention. And as for why other cultures did the same, is there a connection between them? Well, not necessarily, because human ingenuity often occurs in different places at the same time. It's just natural progression of technology. And then there's the hundredth monkey effect argument as well. So I don't think there's anything particularly mysterious about this. You see that wall over there, you see the larger blocks at the bottom and then it, uh, there's smaller blocks at the top. A bit closer. Just want to keep out of this wind. see there the large blocks at the bottom there's even larger ones slightly further up but then the higher you go the smaller they become you can actually get the top of the wall there which is quite unusual around here most of the casing uh, top blocks have been taken away so you can see that very thin row at the top and there's actually uh, mortar on the top of that so that is the height of the wall which is about between 25 and 30 feet, I would estimate. And this is a good example of what they packed the walls with. Before they put the casing stones on. It's hard to imagine what this place would have been like living here. All his entourage working and guards and very interesting how these walls have been obviously 
actually recently they're trying to preserve them by not rebuilding them but at least preserving them to the height that they are by covering them with blocks and cementing them which is a good idea because it gives you an idea of the layout and it stops any more erosion of the foundation walls.